The Japanese Grand Prix it was actually a pretty decent race, to be fair. I saw online a couple people saying, oh, it's so boring. I mean, I get it, Max Verstappen won, but at the end of the day, I don't really mind him winning when he's at least making some overtakes, and it looks like the rest of the field has got a little bit more pace. So I'm going to defend the Japanese Grand Prix today, tell you what I liked about it, what I didn't like, and the bits I found really funny. But first off, we are going to have to talk about the Dutch elephant in the room. Max Verstappen's comeback race after the DNA in Australia was everything we expected. He took pole by actually not that much of Sergio Perez, who had a very good weekend himself, and from there would seemingly manage the race with no issues whatsoever. He didn't lead for every lap, and I believe didn't get the fastest lap either, which shows the rest of the field is closing in, but he did quite comfortably have a 10 second gap by the end of the race. Again, I'm not too mad about that. 10 seconds isn't a huge amount, and Perez was certainly on the pace in today's race so no fault to him either. One thing I didn't think I was going to be saying ever was that Ferrari nailed the strategy. They had both drivers basically running together, and that's considering Leclerc had a poor qualifying performance. In the post-race interviews, I found out that Leclerc said he's been struggling with tyre preparation. What I think this comes down to is that Ferrari seems to have solved their degradation issue. Last season, the tyres would heat up quickly, it would give them blistering qualifying and one lap pace, but during the race, the tyre wear would be too high for them to manage. However, However, this year, they're a lot closer to Red Bull and have really good race pace, not just on low deck tracks, but high deck tracks as well. Again, that's something we didn't see the previous year. However, it probably means that on his outlap, Leclerc will have to manage the tyres differently to how he maybe did last year. And of course, I'm going to talk about his teammate, Carlos Sainz, because honestly, at this point, it's an absolute robbery. He's not going to be at Ferrari. I've been mulling this over in my head, and genuinely, I want to see that man at the front of the field. He provides such entertaining races, he's confident on the brakes, he's confident in defending, his pace at the moment is really good, even close to Leclerc. <laughs> And the way he drives is so clever. He's a lot like Alonso that Carlos will think his way through a race. And honestly, I think that's something that's really important to being the full package as an F1 driver. Being fast is one thing, but being smart is another. And it's why great drivers like Alan Prost will always be remembered. But yeah, it's going to be a bit annoying if science doesn't end up in Red Bull or Mercedes or maybe even McLaren. Although I don't think there's going to be a seat there for a while. With that said, Oscar Piastri actually had a little bit of trouble during this race. He ran deep in the final chicane a couple times, and this cost him a position to Russell at the end. He was, however, having to also deal with Alonso, who put up yet again another brilliant defensive drive to finish in the points and score Aston Martin some well-needed points. And it's not like the other driver in the team was doing that, because Lance Stroll was nowhere. His qualifying pace was terrible, and his race pace also lacked. He didn't even finish in the points, and he has a car that's very capable of doing that. He did come over the radio actually quite upset for Lance Stroll. Normally, he's very calm and collected, and he was saying that the car had no straight line speed. But apparently, Alonso set the car up more for qualifying, whereas Stroll tried to go for the race setup, and it just didn't work out. But he's really going to have to step his game up if his father's got less control over Aston Martin, because I don't think Stroll's seat is quite as guaranteed as it used to be. And someone else who's fighting for their seat at the moment is Daniel Ricciardo, and he had yet another bad race. Well, technically, Daniel was the first driver to finish the race, it was also because he finished it in the wall. During lap 1, turn 2, Daniel came across Albon, slightly made contact, and ended up with both drivers in the wall, which is really bad for Williams, who are already lacking spare parts, as we saw in Australia. And they nearly ended up needing more spare parts, because Logan Sargent was about this close to doing a Logan Sargent and binning it. But thankfully, he beached it in the gravel, got back on the track, and carried on to the end of the race. Apparently, he looked at his steering wheel and saw AMH, and he got really confused. That's why he went off the track. They're gonna have to sort it. One thing you need to sort out is clicking that subscribe button, because we're trying to go for 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Thank you for all the support you've given me so far, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!